really. And then seven, I just I turned my back on it, man. It was. <laughs> I had to fast forward all the way. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see you. Bro. Now, good. Oh, here we are live. That's my fault. Normally, uh, we're good to go, and it's usually me who makes a mistake like four or five minutes into the show, and I can say, well, see, as always, I'm the. No, it's rare that I make a mistake pre show. Like, that's not even getting the kickoff right there. I apologize. Welcome into the NHA NBA Strategy Show. Myself, Terry McBride, when we're normally not talking about going back and watching the X Files, Dexter, or anything else. We're here with you, NHA style. Tyler is producing, already frustrated, I'm sure, because I missed the cue. <laughs> and here we are with you as well. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already. We see some people hanging with us, so make sure you're subscribed as well. What's happening, Terry? It's been a uh, chaotic couple of days over here. I think I was telling you the other day that uh, we had uh, some pipes freeze and then uh, some pipes burst over the weekend in the building here. So it was a couple of days without water. Then they had to come in and replace some nonsense in the hallway again. So it was more no water today. So I'm all smelly. I'm unbathed, but I've been just sitting here focusing on uh, DFS and uh, fantasy basketball. And we got a chaotic day to go through. So always fun. Oh, well, that's the thing. So the beauty of it is that we can't smell you. Exactly. The screen, right? The blessings <laughs> of working remotely, right? <laughs> Absolutely right. And look, you know, you go a couple of days without a shower, then there's nobody there to remind you. That's fine, right? That's that's. I fine. may or may not have put this shirt on yesterday. Nobody out there knows the wiser. I, I actually did stop to think, was I on any shows yesterday? Is anybody going to call me out on that? And I'll just call myself out on it instead. I've been wearing this shirt since yesterday. See, Tyler cares? already has, <laughs> has you pegged. Here's the difference, though. I inadvertently did shower i did clean up the last time that i've been seen on camera here in the awesome community but since i'm wearing the same hat and i'm wearing the same whatever this is pullover <laughs> sweatshirt thing it looks like i haven't changed since friday on awesome since i've been wearing the same <laughs> right. thing so i need to be more conscious of that because i'm not doing myself any favors yeah there you go and look that could be true depending on how your nfl weekend went so i mean you know we all know how uh, those the swings can go so absolutely everything went well last night with the sixers nice little same game parlay on that so it even things oh, yeah. out all right so we have uh, uh, some news here we were just talking about this the most recent thing and it's all been adjusted here with our free projections on no house advantage and again if you're new to nha it's easy it's simple we'll walk you through it but you're building a ticket tyler's going to do that behind you've got 10 points all the way down to one based on confidence and you have free projections on awesomeo right through a optimal lineup page that you can use to basically tell you to plug and play so a lot of guys you'll see here just to kind of preempt this a lot of guys you'll see on site on our own projections are zeroed out that means they're out don't play them if they're even available and that's basically everybody here on the warriors from clay steph to andrew wiggins so we have that at least to factor in right away couple of 90s though that's that's a refreshing sight, Terry, is that we see a couple of 90s in the overs to start with at the very least. Maybe it's Jordan Poole who we can attack because he's popping up everywhere with all of the expected volume with a couple of guys out. Yeah, for sure. Poole in the overs category is looking like one of the stronger decisions you can make on the slate. That's going to be the same case across the DFS sites. It's going to be the same place, you know, the same case where you're betting props, although we were looking at his threes and that seemed pretty aggressive. But a lot of these seem a lot more attainable when we're looking at the no-house board here, uh, just because they're not adjusted for this ridiculous situation where, I, I mean, there's a hell of a Golden State team on the not playing list tonight, uh, including yes. uh, Bijeli, Curry, Draymond, Iguodala, Otto Porter, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman, of course. So they're down to a starting, or at least an unconfirmed starting lineup of uh, of like Poole, Damian Lee, Kamingo will be out there, Kevon Looney will be out there, and then some other you know swappable parts, whether it's Gary Payton, whether it's uh, like a Chris Gioza, somebody like that. But Jordan Poole, there's going to be a good expectation that he's going to see an uptick here. So we've got him projected. Uh, if you're looking at the assists, for example, he's a three and a half assist line. We've got him projected at five point eight four. He's averaging 3.4 assists under normal circumstances in 29.1 minutes. We've got him projected at 36.2 minutes as obviously a much bigger uh, part of the what's going to be happening on the court here. So that seems like a no-brainer to me. That one's basically coming in almost double where uh, what the line is. Seems very easy at 93% to pick that one off. But by the same token, you know, the PRA is low. The points plus assists is low. They're all just not adjusted for this situation. All right. So before we hit a couple of unders, and I'm um... – financially invested in one. So I need you to talk me out of, and granted the bets already locked in. So it's not like I can cash out by any means, but maybe you can ease my pain a little bit. 
Spencer Dinwiddie, though, is popping up pretty heavy, 92.79% to be exact, that his assist prop goes over. It's 4.5, a uh, no-house advantage. Alex has him at 6.84. That's a pretty significant gap, nearly, you know, over two full, but nearly two and a half full assists on the over. And he's the only other guy outside of his PRA. He's the only other, and part of me, not even that is in the 90 percentile. That's at 88.3. So he is the only other person not named Jordan Poole. That's a 90 plus percentile bet on the over. And that's specific with the assist. Can you get to that at 92.7, technically 92.8? Yeah, I mean, it's one of these situations that's going to be created by the absence of Bradley Beal. That team's largely gotten healthy, except they just lost their best player, which kind of sucks for them. But it's creating the opportunity around that four and a half line for Spencer Dinwiddie. He averages uh, 5.7 in 30 and a half minutes a night. Uh, he's projected for 31 minutes. So he's not going to necessarily get a uh, get an uptick in minutes, but just the idea that he's going to be doing a whole hell of a lot more in that offense with no Beal out there, be the primary facilitator. We've got him projected up to a 6.84 in Looking at him across 622 minutes with no Beal on the floor this year, his assist percentage jumps from 28 points, 28.3 to 37.1 percent. That's a major, major jump, and that's reflected in our projection. So I think that one also 92.7 percent. I'm honestly surprised it's not even a little bit higher with that uh, with that kind of an uptick. Seems like a no brainer one for me. He'd have to uh, come out of the game early for that not to come through. Yeah, the only other thing would be PRA. And again, there, there's a slight difference, if you will, right, of percent points. But I'm always interested to see how you approach this because it's really the same. And, and again, there's a slight difference between 92.8 and 88.3. I understand that. So if you're just looking at it from a raw data standpoint, then you would go over the assist. But adding rebounds and points may actually improve the chances of Dinwiddie going over a prop. Not always, but is that the case in this, or will you just play it safe and go with one category with the assists? I honestly think you're fine if you want to go to the PRA. If we're looking at it, it's 19 and a half. We've got him projected at 26 and a half. And in his just normal average, he averages 23.4 in 30 minutes and uh, 30 and a half minutes a night. Like I said, the minutes are going to be about the same. But we talked about the uptick in the assist percentage. His usage also jumps in this situation. So he's also shooting more in addition to facilitating more. He jumps from a 20.3% usage to uh, it was upwards of 25. The dog's over here driving me nuts. So I'm not going to even try to click over to it. But uh, it, so his usage climbs as well. So on the idea that he's going to be facilitating more, shooting more, the points plus assists, he's already Already averaging beyond what tonight's line is seems like a pretty easy one to pick off. So I have no issues going to that one if you didn't want to go to the assist one. But with the assist one being a little bit higher, there's, you know, really it's well, I guess you do have the idea that his teammates do need to make some shots where maybe he could get you the points on his own just on virtue of scoring points. And even if he falls short in the assists, you're probably going to get to that PRA one alone just by, you know, the ball falls into his hands for two rebounds. He picks up two assists instead of four and a half. And then he scores 16, 17 points. You're still there. So maybe just with that notion, it's a little bit safer, even though the probability is technically lower. If you want to chase that one, I guess that would be the argument for why to go to that one over the assists. But I feel really comfortable comfortable with that assist one on its own. All right. So we have to flip to the unders now because there are a couple of higher percentage point ones that are worth looking at, especially as we're building this ticket. Or even for people as we just hit a couple of different props for Dinwiddie, a bunch for pool if you're building multiples. And you want to spread it out by all means. But look, we've got a lot of things here that we continue to tell you about going on, not just joining us on No House Advantage, where we'll match your first deposit up to $25. Use that promo code AWESOMO. But you can also get access to everything we have going on here. AWESOMO plus the weekly pass is $29.95. Full access to premium content, tools on AWESOMO. And if you're only looking to play the NBA DFS area of it, well, then you can sign up for AWESOMO plus the NBA packages as low as four ninety five a week. Now, Fantasy Cruncher is an add on. We want to make sure you know that. But look, this is a great value if you're going twenty nine ninety five a week for everything, or just four ninety five for the NBA package as low as that. Take advantage of what we have on top of the NHA. So I mentioned that I am invested in this. The PR right now. Again, this could be a, a bunch of different scenarios. So I'm not ripping up my digital ticket as of quite yet, Terry. 
But I went over in a parlay, at least. I went three plus for Devontae Graham. And then individually, I went four plus made threes, mainly because this guy could come out and, and take 12 to 13 threes in the blink of an eye and nobody would even second guess it. He struggled mightily against the Cavs and still took thir- uh, 11 jacks from three. So that's not going away. No Ingram. I get that. His PRA under, though. At 28 and a half is the strongest underplay that we have on our own projections, courtesy of Alex on Osimo. So can I be okay with my three plus four plus threes and him still be comfortably under his PRA? Yeah, I think you can. And I think there's an argument to be made that that one might change throughout the day. We already know that uh, no Josh Hart out there tonight. We've got Ingram still uh, listed as a, uh, as a game time decision. Say again? He's lingering. Yeah, Ingram still on the fringes is a game time decision. So I mean, this might be a situation where we see that big uptick in uh, in opportunity again for Graham, and maybe these peel back a little bit more. They're still aggressive on the PRA though, twenty eight and a half on that PRA. Under normal circumstances, he averages a 21.2 in 31 minutes a night. We've got him. It's another situation. The minutes not necessarily going to change, but the opportunity, the usage, and what he's doing on the court might change. That's still a lot of additional work for him to do to get from uh, a 21 and change average, which is exactly where Alex has him projected. I believe we do have Ingram projected in with that, but we've got Hart out. It's a right. big ask for him to jump from that average up to the 28 and a half that you need for that PRA. So I'm pretty comfy with, with that one. It might slip if we, a little bit by percentage if we see Ingram come off, but it would probably still land, you know, high 70s, 80s maybe, and, uh, and probably even higher than that. And I think your threes is probably still safe. Alex does have it on here. We've got him projected at 3.02, but it's against a four and a half line. We've got it coming through under 88% of the time. I don't totally hate it, though. I mean, if you're thinking about an uptick in usage opportunity, he makes three a game, takes eight and a half a game. Like you said, no worries about the trigger. He's going to be taking shots. That's all I need, man. Right. And if those two (laughs) other primary guys aren't out there, I can easily see him taking 11, 12 threes, and he's going to make a couple of them. So 35.3% three-point shooter, that's right on what you need. You just need him to take uh, take the shots, really. Now, is it easier to just go under his assists, which is only two points less at 91.7, where NHA is offering six and a half as the line, despite their projection on Osimo being a, nearly a full two assists lower than what NHA has at four, five, six? Uh, let's take a look with uh, just real quick. Let me see if I can get him on the uh, assist percentage here. I didn't have that one up on the screen, but uh, I mean, basically, we're those... identi- oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was waiting. I, I was waiting and waiting, so I didn't know. Well, how, if you were going to say something, it was going to buy me time to click on the right. Exactly. What I, was <laughs> wow. I saw the dog earlier jump in, so I I was waiting now for any type of time killing that I needed to do. By all means, I'm here for you. <laughs> so it looks like we've got 187 minutes of him with uh, Hart and Ingram both off, just to uh, to make it easy. Okay. 23.1 percent assist percentage. And to get to, uh, let's see if we can get to him quickly on the other screen here. Under normal circumstances, that's a 21.3. So that is a minor uptick in the assist percentage with those two players off the court, which is the situation that we're kind of defining as uh, as a bigger opportunity for him. So yeah, I think with a, without a big uptick there, that one's kind of maybe safer. I think the other one's still safe. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, the 21 uh, average up to a 28 and a half is a big ask, even with the improved circumstances. But that assists one specifically at basically the same probability mark might be the better one to pick off. It's the thing he doesn't. It, well, we're not talking about rebounding necessarily, but out of, you know, if you want to take scoring off the board for him, he does scoring better than he does assists, right? Does yeah, absolutely. Sense? No, it does make sense. All right. So out, again, Graham, you have four options really on the high 80 to low 90s. PRA was right there at the top. I guess I buried the lead and it could have just gone three pointers made since that's available, even though you referenced it in your answer. And that's kind yeah. of you for not just burying me <laughs> and saying, you idiot, you could have just gone there. Cat is sitting at rebounds, under rebounds, but that's already down to 83%. So if we go back to our over category, we move past the top two favorites, which were Jordan Poole and Spencer Didwitty. We do get into high 80 territory here with Thomas Bryant, DiVincenzo, even Kuzma with rebounds. So knowing that we always prefer overs to unders, is there anybody in that high 80s range that we can get to that makes sense? 
Yeah, I think you got to like the uh, the Thomas Bryant either way, the rebounds uh, or the points plus rebounds. We've got him projected out uh, pretty far ahead of both of those coming up in the range of where he's, you know, you're almost talking about double the line. So it's pretty easy to pick those off. Those were our leading projection earlier in the day before all that Warriors news changed. Uh, or excuse me, I think Spencer Dinwiddie was still a tick ahead of him, but Bryant was right there. He's come back. He's uh, averaging 19 minutes a night, played 20 the last time out. That puts him right at a uh, 14.86 six projection for uh, the points plus rebounds with the line at eight and a half. That seems really, really easy to pick off in his 15.2 minutes a night. So far he's averaged uh, an 11.3. Uh, excuse me. That's a, that's points. That's PRA. He's averaged a 10.7. Uh, so we're already well ac- across that in the average. And that's in less minutes than what we're projecting him for tonight. Feels pretty comfy on that one. All right. So below that, now we're kind of getting into, and this is great because normally this part, of, as we've seen the last couple of weeks, we've been scraping in like that 70s range. But we're comfortably now in that mid-80s. Anybody else you want before we flip over? Again, you mentioned Thomas Bryant, right? So DiVincenzo and Kuzma are also here. Boosh as well, if you wanted to go him with his rebounds, we have nearly a, a two-rebound gap. But then at that point, it becomes a little bit of a risk because – well, first off, it's the same names, just different props. So those are really the only other guys, if you wanted to hit on either of those or really any of those three that I mentioned that are not either Bryant or Poole and then the guys above them in Dinwiddie. Is there anybody, or not anybody, but from a Kuzma to DiVincenzo to even that Boosh rebounds prop, trying my best, Terry, to avoid going back to the unders, but it looks like we're going to have to after this one. Yeah, I don't mind the uh, the DiVincenzo ones. We've got him projected for 19.7 minutes, right around the 20 minutes that he's averaged so far for the season. And he's putting up, you know, it's a it's a line of five and a half on the points plus assists. Not exactly a ton of uh, of work for him to do. And he averages eight and a half. So that's not really asking very much of him beyond what he normally does. We've got him projected at a 9.01. Seems pretty easy to pick off at 87.23% probability. If you wanted to go to the PRA, I would have no problem with that. But it's another situation where, you know, he's putting up, uh, what is he at? 3.8 rebounds a game. So the PRA average, 12.3. So you're talking about asking him to, again, he's exceeding that uh, that mark already in the average, and we're projecting him out at uh, at average minutes. I really don't see an issue with either one. I think I prefer the points plus assists one, though, just by a little bit. All right, man. You know it's time. We're going to have to go back in a couple of minutes here and hit a couple of unders. I did see our buddy Kickstart on the chat asking about any Gordon props or even Barton, right, without Jokic on there and you're not really getting a a ton there from the book standpoint so i have one already that i was looking at thanks to kick there and that suggestion but again i I don't know if or how you are targeting either of those two guys pending Jokic. so it would really really depend on the Jokic news i don't have them uh on my board Jokic is one of the better looking overs right now assuming that he's in for his normal minutes we've got him projected at the site 33.9 minutes right around his average that has him cruising past the 11 and a half rebounds there's the chance that he doesn't play so if we drop down we'll take a look at like Aaron Gordon points plus assists 15.5 is the line we've got him projected at 16.18 but with Jokic playing we know that Aaron Gordon is a capable passer of the basketball from the front court he kind of step into that uh, facilitation role from the front court a little bit to fill uh, Jokic's gigantic shoes I was looking at Jokic's assist percentage earlier he uh, is only trailing two point guards it was Chris Paul and I forget who else on this slate but he was ahead of Deontay Murray and a bunch of other point guards in, wow. in terms of the assist percentage on this slate so it's not like he's going to step in and be become Nikola Jokic, but I would like the points plus assists, I think, for Aaron Gordon there, considering that we've already got him above it. He averages above what we need, and he would be stepping into that bigger role if Jokic isn't there. So I don't mind that one. Uh, You could certainly chase that, but I like the Jokic. I like Jokic across the board today if he plays. Yeah, I think if Jokic... So I was trying to think of something that may not be as impacted by Jokic's status, and it's hard, right, because he's got his hands all over everything when it comes to the game. But Aaron Gordon is jacking threes, eight, eight, even five, the third game prior at Brooklyn a week ago. But four of eight, two of eight. And I'm not worried so much about the makes as, as I am with volume. Jokic playing. So if Jokic is in, I think we can still get somewhere between a six to eight attempt night from Gordon. If he's out, I feel like while it may not 
bump up much, Terry, so much as you're pretty much locked into a higher, you know, maybe a seven to eight attempt night. Over one and a half threes for Aaron Gordon, with or without Jokic, just seems low. And again, if it's NHA or the books, you're going to get a pretty good return on that. So that's what I was looking at, thinking, you know, he doesn't need to drop 24, 28, 30 points in order to knock down two of seven threes tonight with or without Jokic. Yeah, if you're expecting him to uh, to be shooting that many, I don't have the like 10 most recent game uh, stat in front of me. So what I was looking at season long, uh, just taking three and a half per game. So that kind of jibes more with what we're seeing on Alex's uh, NHA board, where we've got him projected for just 1.07 threes made under right. the line for one and a half. So the under was kind of favored based on that. But if you take into account a Jokic absence, if you take into account an increased volume in recent uh, in recent games, then yeah, there's at least logic behind it. And that was something we were chasing in uh, in chat earlier today. You know, arguing about the the viability of math and uh, whether math is uh, something you should pay attention to, and it certainly is. Um, but just you know, the the notion of I have a gut feeling versus I think this because of X, Y, and Z. And if you have those X, Y, and Zs to fill in on a question like that, then you're not just guessing, right? So that makes sure. sense to me, what you're, what you're saying. It's not just throwing out a wild pick there. So I don't mind making that bet. Right. If, and if that and just sense. to add some context to what you're saying here is after Tuesday, January 25th, where I have a stretch of games where he's taken four, four, six, six, two, zero, two. I'm not making this wager. But uh, looking at the last three games where he's averaging seven attempts per game, that can get now again, all I need is two. So is. going two for seven now is not that big of an ask for Aaron Gordon if I'm playing the averages. So, yeah, that's exactly it. I feel like if I were doing this mo where he was just coming off, you know, four, two type attempts. Absolutely. It's definitely pulling something out of there. All right. So and that's where some of the yeah. fragility of the projection comes in, too, because okay. we can't always account for this immediate, you know, last three game stretch. It depends. You know, you make the algorithm too fragile if you're trying to chase those things. But sometimes in a single game instance or a single projection instance, it can become a fragile projection the other way. You know, there's a recent right. uptick that would eventually get caught up to in the projections doing them the right way. So it might just be an interim thing where his the projections are a little bit behind. I just pulled up while we were talking the 10 game uh, stretch averaging uh, five threes a game uh, attempted over the last 10 games, making 1.9. So he's delivering on what you need over the last 10 games. Anybody else that we should close out on? I'm always looking at, you know, last player two on the underside. If there's a guy that we can fade from a point standpoint, if it's okay with you, I'd like to stay away from Devonte Graham just because I have some money invested in on him. But the only other guy that, that really pops up from a playable number in the sense of you have higher percentages to play. So you're not forced to go here, but Duncan Robinson, you know, I know no Jimmy, no Tucker. There's a bump up for, you know, for some other guys there. It doesn't look like Robinson is going to get that benefit by any means. Struess maybe will. So Robinson at 12 and a half versus 10 on what we have with Alex's free projection. I know it's only at 73% for the under, but from a point standpoint, maybe a little easier to fade as opposed to a more specific category like boards or assists. Yeah, I have no issue chasing that one, honestly. Uh, we've got him knocked down uh, to a 24 and a half minute projection tonight. He averages 27 and a half minutes a night for the full course of the season with a lot of you know weird situations in that uh, in that rotation. And he scores 11.8 points per game in that 27 and a half minute average. So if you're pulling minutes away from him, and Jimmy is back tonight, actually, that was confirmed earlier. So with Jimmy oh, back, pulling minutes away that. from him. Yeah, there, there is every good reason in the world to go to that. And I'm actually surprised. I think 73% is probably a little low. We've got him projected at 10 points. So the math obviously, you know, works out. But I think we might be projecting him even a little bit aggressively, uh, you know, based on where we've got him in the minutes and what the situation is going to be. Dunk's just not a player I love going to in a lot of situations anyway. So 56.5% true shooting percentage is fine. But, uh, you know, he's a guy definitely, you know, we're chasing a points line. So I don't need to say he's a guy that definitely needs to score points for you, I guess. I was thinking in DFS terms. Awesome. Well, look, we appreciate everybody hanging with us here. Take advantage of a bunch of things on NHA, including our promo code AWESOMO. It's right there at the top. You can use it when you sign up to No House Advantage. We'll match your first deposit up to $25. $25, a lot. You can jump in on these 
All of these contests are, are affordable where you can still turn around and make a good profit. Use everything that we have available to you free here on Awesome O. We want to thank Terry. You can do that by following him and then thanking him on Twitter at DigitalB21 at Shander Show for me. Thanks to Tyler. Thanks to you all out there for hanging. Again, hit that thumbs up button, please, on the way out. And we'll do it again next week, my friend. Can't wait. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great night.